Hi everyone, Karen here. So a question that I get asked all the time, but especially right around the end of summer, beginning of fall, when everyone's heading back to school, is what kind of printer should I get? Now this is tough for me to answer because obviously there's no one universal answer to this question. It's like asking what kind of car should I buy? I think people are hoping that there is some magical printer out there that always works like a perfect little snowflake and never makes you want to reenact that scene from Office Space. Well, that printer does not exist. Even the two printers that I have that I am very happy with, I still say a quick prayer to the printer gods before every single big project. And every time they print without issues, my brain is literally just the praise hands emoji. With that said though, I do still have a few thoughts on the topic, so I came up with a list of things to think about when you're deciding what kind of printer is best for you. First thing, really think about whether you need a printer in the first place. Think about how much you're going to be printing and how much is color versus black and white, and then figure out where the public printers are near you and how much they cost. If you're an English major and all you're going to be printing out is pages with text on them, it might be more cost effective to just go to the library and print for five cents a page. But I assume that most of you guys who are asking are art majors who need to print in color quite a bit, or you just want the convenience of having a printer in your room so that if you have an 8 a.m. class and the library only opens at 8 a.m. and you're going to be working on your projects all night the night before, you can actually go print them out before class. So okay, you want a printer, now you have to decide if you want an inkjet or a laser printer. When I was in college, junior and senior year, I had one of each, and I actually still have both of those here in my current apartment, and it is so great. Since my laser printer has a scanner attached to it, I was free to buy an inkjet printer that's higher quality and didn't need to have a scanner attached. I could print out papers for liberal arts classes or things like boarding passes on my laser printer, where I literally replace the toner, like, once a year, and I don't have to waste all of the expensive inkjet ink on just plain black and white printing. I can save it for high quality prints of art projects. So if you have the budget and you have the space in your dorm room or your apartment, I definitely recommend getting one of each. But if you can't get one of each and you definitely need to be printing in color, just get an inkjet. I personally have found that prints from inkjet printers are way brighter and more vibrant than prints from color laser printers. Then again, I haven't personally tested any of the newest color laser printers out on the market, so maybe by now they're great. But in my experience, I prefer the look of an inkjet print, but if you want to try them out for yourself, uh, you can determine for yourself what quality you're looking for. So when you're choosing a printer, besides the initial cost of the printer itself, you also want to look at how much it's going to cost to refill all of the ink or all of the toner. My inkjet printer is not cheap, it has six ink cartridges, and it costs $84 to refill all of them on Amazon. But if I run out of ink in the middle of a project and need to run out to the office supply store, it's more like $120. Kinda hurts my wallet a little. If you want to replace the toner in a black and white printer, it looks like on Amazon it averages around $50 for each thing of toner. Toner lasts way longer than ink cartridges. As I said, I replace mine like once a year, but I'm also not printing like every day. So laser printers are definitely cheaper to maintain than inkjet printers, but in terms of color prints, it's just kind of another case of you get what you pay for. One quick life pro tip though, every single time, as soon as you replace any of the ink cartridges or any of the toner in your printer, go out and buy the replacement right away so that you always have a full set of ink cartridges on hand and if you're working on a project at 3 a.m. and you have one page left to print and then suddenly your printer is out of magenta, you're not stuck with a useless printer and you have it all ready to go. Okay, let's see, a few more things to consider. If you're in design school, you might want to look for a printer that can print at least tabloid size, which is 11 by 17. My old printer when I was a sophomore could only print up to letter size, and it was so annoying whenever I had to go out and pay for printing for so many projects, even though I had a printer in my dorm room. For mock-ups, you can definitely just print letter size and then tape it together, but for final projects, you do kind of want it to be all one high quality print rather than taped together. So if you think you're going to be designing a lot of things that are tabloid size, you know, 
get a printer that can print that. If you're going to be making a lot of printed books, you might want to look into a printer that can print double-sided. However, with my laser printer, when it prints double-sided, it kind of feeds the paper through and then turns it around and feeds it back through again. And every single time, it ends up slightly askew. The two sides are never perfectly lined up. So for smaller projects, it's pretty much always worth it just to feed the paper back through manually. Personally, it's not a feature that I use all the time, but for some of you guys, you might really want that, so just another thing to keep in mind. And then finally, one more thing. I mentioned this in my video all about paper from a few weeks ago, but when it comes to getting the highest quality print possible, you're definitely going to want to get paper from the same brand as your printer. The quality of the paper really does matter for how bright and vibrant the colors are. So if you can, just stick within the same brand because you know that they were designed to work with each other and you'll be all set. It can sometimes get a little expensive. I think I paid $50 for this in my school store, but that was six years ago and I'm still working my way through it. And also, if you want to save money, buy off of Amazon or other places online and do not buy from your school store. Okay, so after all of that, I know some of you guys are still just gonna be like, well, Karen, just tell me what printers you have and I'm just gonna buy those. Well, I bought mine like six years ago, so there are definitely newer models out than the ones that I have. But to answer your question, I have the Epson Photo 1400 as my inkjet printer, and I have the Canon Image Class MF. 4350D as my laser printer. I spent about $260 on the Epson when I bought it and about $150 on the Canon when I bought it. So I think that's kind of a good price point to aim for. Honestly, when I was looking at what printers I would recommend for you guys these days, I just went to the same place where I buy literally everything that I own, which is the most popular page on Amazon. I'm still partial to Epson printers, so looking at the most popular Epson printers these days. I'd probably skip the $50 and $60 ones, and this $1430 for $280 looks promising. It can print up to 13 by 19 which is more than enough for most projects. It has borderless printing, which I don't think that mine has so I am jealous. It has six ink cartridges just like mine, which are expensive to replace, but I promise you the colors are so worth it. And it has four out of five stars, which is about as much as you can ask for because every single printer has something wrong with it. The next most popular printer costs $600, which I think is a little bit excessive for a student. I mean, if you have the money, go for it, but that's not necessary. In terms of laser printers, even though I am very happy with my Canon laser printer, I've heard really good things about Brother printers, and the top three most popular printers on here are all Brother brand. I like this first one, which is $130, because it has a scanner and a copier, and honestly, laser printers are a lot less nuanced than inkjet printers. It pretty much looks exactly like the printer that I have, and it has really good reviews, so I'd say it's probably a solid purchase. So if you're still not sure, Amazon actually has these really helpful charts which compare a lot of the different features and price points between similar printers in case you're looking for something really specific that I haven't covered here. You can also just go to the specific brand's website to see what literally all of the options are. You can go through that and pick which one you like the best and then go on the rest of the internet and do your research to figure out where you can get it for the cheapest price. And finally, if you don't care what printer you get and you just need any sort of printer at all, wait until the spring when everybody is graduating and going home for the summer, and you can probably just buy a printer off of somebody who's flying home and can't take their printer with them. Tons of people will be selling their printers and even their nice paper for pretty cheap, just trying to get somebody to take it off their hands. So right around May or June, keep an eye on Craigslist or your school's internal message boards and you might be able to find one for pretty cheap. But honestly, if you're going to art school, you really just should build your printer and the ink and the paper into your school budget. Any art major is going to need a ton of supplies, and graphic design is actually one of the cheaper majors. Yes, ink is expensive, but you only have to buy it every few months, and you're not buying giant canvases and oil paints every week, or giant blocks of clay to carve into a sculpture. So if you budget for it beforehand, hopefully 
hopefully the sticker shock each time you have to buy new paper or buy new ink won't be quite as bad. So I think that is all I have to say about printers. I hope that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you have anything to add or any more recommendations for anybody who is in the market for a new printer. And if you want to see more of my videos about art supplies, I have a few that you might be interested in all about tape and glue and paper. And I also have an entire playlist of videos for people who are going to art school. You can watch that right here. All right, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and a great start to the school year, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone!